The Muncie Police Department rev revives a program with much success. How Muncie citizens got a chance to work with police officers. The polls are open again for the SGA runoff election. Students have one last chance to decide between Elevate and Empower. And a chilly day today, but the sunshine and warmer temperatures are on the way. I'll tell you just how much after the break. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I'm Tanner Holbrook. And I'm Brittany Irvin. Thanks for joining us. Well, several Muncie community members recently experienced an educational program they won't soon forget. News and Indiana's Emerson Lehman takes us behind the scenes of the Muncie's Police Department, recently completed Citizens Police Academy. It depends on the moon, I guess, because some days it's really, really dead, or you get, like, the last Sunday we worked was busy nonstop. We see police officers every day, responding to calls, patrolling the streets. Every Wednesday for six weeks, members of the Muncie community got to experience firsthand what it's like to be one of those officers. I was interested to get an idea of what it's like to be one of our law enforcement officers, and I thought this class would be a really great opportunity for that. Having gone through it now, it's way more than I ever had expected. All of the hands-on training, um, when else would any civilian get a chance to do that? Behind the leadership of Officer Chase Winkle and Sergeant Jeff Lacey, the Muncie Police Department revived its once popular program. The six-week course involved community leaders, educators, students, and more. You might think, you know, well, all you have to do is go up to a car and have a nice scenario. You never know when that split second might happen. And when you're thinking about that and you're stopping, it's like one hesitation you got you got like seconds to make make up your mind and you sitting in that situation trying to make that judgment call is a whole lot different than saying well if I was there I'd have done it this way the program aimed to connect the community with the police department with the instructors making the training scenarios as real as possible they included everything from self defense tactics to firearm training exercises the final week, participants rode along with officers to see how they work in real time. In Muncie, Emerson Lehman, Newslink, Indiana. And joining us now at the desk is Emerson Lehman. And Emerson, you actually had the chance to be a part of this great program. Yes, Tanner, that's right. It was an awesome opportunity that I'm very grateful to the Muncie Police Department for. The experiences that not only myself and uh, our news director, Seth Toko, were able to experience, but the community members as a whole, it was just something that I feel like every citizen should have the opportunity to do so because you don't realize the things that these police officers are going through when sure. they are out in the community and I mean just some of the things that I got to do. We drove a police car, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we drove a police car. We, uh, I was tased actually and I believe we have some footage yeah, of that Yeah, I think we actually out. want to see you getting tased Emerson. We <laughs> have we'll that footage so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Everybody ready? Taser, taser, taser! Wow. Yeah, I wow. still, I still kind of feel the pain uh, just yeah, watching it feel <laughs> over and over again. But it was just such an incredible experience. And like I said, I wish that every citizen throughout the country would be able to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful to the Muncie Police Department. And good news, they are going to continue this program. At least they're hoping to have one again in the summer or early <laughs> fall. So wow. if any uh, Muncie citizens are interested, they should follow the Muncie Police Department on Facebook and uh, check out when that next program is because it is a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. All right, and you Emerson. get to get taste, yeah. so. Yes, you have, you have the opportunity. I, I volunteered. Uh, i not going to say I regret it because it was interesting to learn about it, but, uh, but we definitely, don't recommend it. definitely yeah. not something I would recommend nor something I want to try again. All right, Emerson, All right. we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Well, new tonight on NewsLink, voting for the Student Government Association election is open yet again. After the initial election last month, none of the three slates received more than 50% of those votes, Tanner. A runoff was announced between Elevate and Empower. Voting opened this morning and will continue through 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And you can vote at one of the public voting locations on campus or online. News like Indiana has you covered with those SGA results. Just make sure to join us tomorrow night at 9 for a full recap of that election. 
In statewide election news, a central Indiana man was found guilty of voter registration fraud. The Anderson man collected registrations for a state house candidate with fake addresses. The investigated investigation rather started after Republican and Democratic representatives reported 30 potential invalid registrations. He was sentenced to 50 hours of community service. And switching gears to weather here, very beautiful sunny day. Hopefully we have some more of that in store. Yeah, we're really hoping for those temperatures to stay, Gabe. So good news only. What do you have for us? Yeah, good evening, Tanner and Brittany. For once, I actually do have good news for the most part. We enjoyed the sunshine today. And uh, though cool temperatures out there this evening, 41 degrees out there in Muncie, down into the mid-30s off to the south. And temperatures will drop down into the lower 30s as we make our way through the evening. We could see a few light scattered showers early on this evening. That's what we're already seeing in some portions of the viewing area. They won't last long as we start to see conditions clear out pretty early on in the evening. Now today, temperatures warmed only up to 45 degrees. That's short of our average this time of year, which is 53 degrees. The good news is we will see those temperatures on the increase through the week and the sunshine sticks around for the most part too. I'll have all the details on just how warm it'll get coming up. All right, thanks, Gabe. Well, after two fatal shootings this weekend, New Zealand authorities are still working to identify those victims. CNN's John Lawrence reports how the survivors are dealing with that trauma. New Zealand still in shock after Friday's fatal shootings. You never wake up and think something like this would happen on your own doorstep. Funerals and vigils were held across the country this weekend. Survivors, meanwhile, attempt to cope with living through a terrifying experience. I just can't stop thinking about it, getting those flashbacks, and um, it's one of those experiences which I wish ne no one ever encounters. 28-year-old Australian Brenton Tarrant is charged with murder. Additional charges are expected later. We say sorry for the families over there, for, for the dead and the injured. Yeah, we just can't think nothing else. The Prime Minister says authorities hope to have all the bodies returned to their families by Wednesday. And right now, the focus is on increased security. While mosques are in active use, there will be a police presence outside. While they are closed, the public will remain in the vicinity. Dozens were also injured in the incident and are hospitalized. Some of them have recovered enough to be released. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Prime Minister Arden says the government of New Zealand has agreed to make its gun laws together tougher. Rather, we will continue to update you as the story progresses. Days after the New Zealand massacre, police in the Netherlands arrested their own suspect in a separate shooting after a gunman opened fire on a tram this morning. Investigators say 37-year-old Gokman Tanis shot and killed at least three people and wounded nine others. In a statement, the Dutch Prime Minister said, We are stronger than fanatics. Police are investigating a possible motive for the attack. And a French Aviation Investigation Bureau has found clear similarities in the Ethiopian Airlines crash and the Lion Airline crash last October. The BEA said today black box data shows links between the crashes and will be used for further investigation. Ethiopian authorities asked BEA for help interpreting the black boxes because they don't have proper technology. And the Ethiopian Accident Investigation Bureau intends to release a preliminary report within 30 days. Debate nationals were held at Ball State this weekend. How Ball State fared in the competition, that's coming up. And a new study shows aspirin may not have the effects you think it does. What experts found about the drug coming up, stay with us. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, she seems fine to me. No more, not my problem. No more, she was drunk. No more, he was drunk. No more, she was asking for it. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, why didn't she tell anyone? No more, we don't talk about that. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more.
So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? Welcome back. This weekend, Ball State held the National Educational Debate Association's National Debate Tournament. The topic students debated involved whether or not the United States should eliminate mandatory minimum sentencing. One of the winners of the tournament is Matt Hinkleman and Asia Cermak. Hinkleman is proud to have placed first since he considers many teams in the division to be quite talented. I know a lot of other teams inside our division that are pretty cutthroat. They're really quite good, so it, it always feels good and we can come out on top over them. To keep up with the Ball State debate team, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. Well, a daily dose of aspirin may not actually help prevent health problems, CNN's Meredith Wood reports. An aspirin a day has long been held as sage advice when it comes to preventing or staving off a heart attack or stroke. But according to new guidelines by the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association, the benefits may not outweigh the risks for older adults without a history of heart disease. For those adults, the study's author says a healthy lifestyle, coupled with getting blood pressure and cholesterol under control, are the best preventatives. A daily low-dose aspirin can increase the risk of internal bleeding and early death. One of the study's co-chairs says daily aspirin regimens can benefit older adults with a history of heart disease who have trouble lowering their cholesterol. As always, there isn't a one-size-fits-all rule. Every patient should work with their doctor to determine the right prevention plan for them. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. Again, that was Meredith Wood reporting. And transitioning on to some weather, Gabe, what can we expect? Yeah, temperatures falling down into the lower 30s this evening, but there's a warm-up on the way. I'll have the details after the break. For those who serve today, and those who served before them, for those whose sacrifice will never end, the Gary Sinise Foundation shows its gratitude through entertainment, outreach, and life-changing support. We can never give enough but we can always give a little more. Find out how you can donate at GarySiniseFoundation.org. Sometimes there is no do-over. Some things you can't rewind. That's when an extra safety step could mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. Learn more at poolsafely.gov. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. 
Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana, transitioning to weather here. I'm loving the sunshine that we have. What about you guys? Yeah, it's finally some relief. I'll let you, Brittany. You, <laughs> you know, agree? it's going well so far, but with Indiana weather, we don't know what's coming next. Yeah. So, Gabe, help us out. You have a point there. You can never know what to expect with Indiana weather. But the good news is it looks like we're going to see quite a bit of sunshine for this week ahead. Though right now we're dealing with a little bit of rain in some portions of the viewing area. 41 degrees right now at the scramble light. It looks dry out there with some cloudy conditions. Overall, that northwest wind at 8 miles per hour is only looking like it's going to decrease as we move through the evening, which will help conditions maybe not feel quite as cold out there. Now, radar has been picking up on some really light scattered showers across the area, some even transitioning into snow. It's hard to tell how much of this is actually reaching the ground. You know, some areas have reported seeing a bit of rain, but overall, this isn't a very large system and with really dry and clear conditions off to the west overall. So that's the good news. Doesn't look like we're going to see any long term uh, weather or precipitation overall. This is severe weather preparedness week here in Indiana. And the good news is we aren't going to see any severe weather in our area. But let's talk about a little bit what a watch and a warning means when it comes to severe weather. So here's what a watch means. A watch means the ingredients are there. They're, everything can come together possibly for severe weather. You need to be prepared and conditions are favorable for severe weather to occur. A warning on the other hand means take action immediately. There's severe weather that's happening in the area or about to happen and seek shelter as soon as possible. So make sure you know that difference. Now, when we also see severe weather, you may also hear us talk about those SPC or Storm Prediction Center outlooks, slight, marginal, enhanced, and so forth. Here's a look at what those mean. Essentially, it's an indication of how widespread we expect severe weather to be for the most part. Of course, uh, yeah, marginal risk, a number one there is isolated, whereas a five means a widespread severe weather outbreak. So keep those in mind as we head into severe weather season. Temperatures this evening falling down to 27 degrees, partly cloudy conditions. Again, no severe weather expected by any means this evening. Really a pleasant night overall, but bundle up if you're headed out. It will feel a little bit chilly in the morning, 29 degrees by 8 a.m., though warming up into the 40s by the afternoon with partly cloudy conditions expected, reaching a high of 48 degrees across the area and even into the 50s down off to the south in areas like Terre Haute and Bloomington could reach even 51 degrees. And that's only a sign of what's to come later in the week. So the good news is sunny conditions are expected to stay in place for the area tomorrow with clear skies expected. Some clouds starting to move in late tomorrow night, but really most of the day looks clear before some rain makes its way in, unfortunately, on Wednesday. Here's a look at that 2 p.m., a line of showers over east central Indiana and expected to march off to the east. Though the good news is we'll start to see conditions clear out. This is around 9 p.m. on Wednesday night and we should start to be clear and dry out. And really, that's the only main shot of rain for the work week ahead. That's great news where we've seen so many much clouds and rain across the area. So we'll see temperatures rise up to 46 degrees for Wednesday, the first official day of spring, 46 to 47 degrees, excuse me, on Thursday before we see temperatures rise into the 50s later in the week and even into the 60s early in next week. And the big takeaway here is sunny conditions are expected for the most part, which is yeah. a nice change compared to what we've seen this winter. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll take it. The well, 60s. we're good to see there's some sun, the weather's mm -hmm. heating up, cold yeah. weather's heating up in sports. Oh, Brittany Tanner, this is my favorite time of the year. Oh, yeah. March Madness is here, and we'll have all the details on what MAC conference teams made it to the dance coming up. Isn't this perfect? It was my pleasure. May I? Adam. I can't thank you enough for saving me from that sweepstakes scam. I could have lost everything. It was a classic cat and mouse game. Remember, you never have to pay to play. You're my hero. Huh. After all these years. What's the matter, Adam? Cat got your tongue? Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head.
I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Colton Howard with sports. The Ball State Cardinals field hockey team claimed 15 spots in this year's National Field Hockey Coaches Association Division I National Academic Squad. This announcement comes just one week after being recognized with the National Academic Team Award. This year's 15 representatives under first year head coach Stephanie Bernthal are the most Ball State has ever placed on the list. As a team, Ball State had a GPA of 3.6 in the fall semester and boasts a 3.5 accumulative. As Allison McCollin leaves the team with a perfect 4.0. Today was Selection Monday for the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament and teams around the country were excited to watch live. The bracket, however, was broadcasted about three hours before the selection show on ESPNU during one of their shows. The NCAA issued a statement saying, quote, an unfortunate technical error by the ESPN revealed the 2019 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship bracket earlier today. We regret the network's mistake and are working with our partners at ESPN to prevent similar errors in the future years. The early leaks did not stop teams from celebrating when they saw their names appear on the bracket. One shocking reveal was UConn. A women's basketball powerhouse was not a number one seed for the first time since 2006. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett wants to give somebody $1 million a year for the rest of their life, but there's a catch. The Berkshire Hathaway CEO is once again holding a March Madness men's college basketball bracket contest. The rules are simple. Anyone who can pick the last 16 teams of the tournament will win $1 million for a year for the rest of their life. But to play, you have to be an employee at Berkshire Hathaway. About 1,000 Berkshire employees completed brackets in previous years. Last year, not a single worker won the contest. In fact, none of them got past the first round of a 68-team tournament thanks to numerous upsets. Eight employees who survived the longest split a $1,000 consolation prize. And then there was one. Well, no, there's 68 teams in the NCAA tournament, but only one MAC conference team who got a big to the big dance on the men's side. The University of Buffalo enters March Madness as a number six seed after capping off the year on a 12-game win streak. The Bulls will have to wait till Wednesday night for their opponent. First, Arizona State and St. John's, New York will have to tip off, and the winner goes on to play Buffalo in the opening round. The Blue and White will be representing the MAC Conference in both the men's and women's tournament, but they won't be alone on the women's bracket. Central Michigan joins them after securing one of the 32 at-large bids. And just out of curiosity, Colton, who do you have winning the big tournament here? Well, is it too basic to say Duke? I mean, they're my favorite, but watch out for Buffalo to at least make a splash in this tournament. I mean, there's a reason they call it March Madness. It is a shame you picked Duke. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, number one, two, three prospects go into the draft. I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, they are the favorite. Well, I'm just going to say you can't spell Duke without UK, so there you go. We're going to have a fight here, guys, so I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colton, so much. Just ahead, why drivers in one central Indiana city were utterly upset. Yeah, we're milking it for all it's worth and trending. You'll find out why just ahead. Stay with us. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems, the ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. 
No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems, and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out, or don't. The choice is yours. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. Welcome back. And now let's take the time to take a look at what's trending. Yeah, joining us now at the desk is Gabby Mitchell. What do you have for us, Gabby? Absolutely. It was an interesting St. Patrick's Day weekend for Noblesville police. A cow roamed the streets of East Noblesville. That's right, a cow. The cow was spotted moving, <laughs> crossing to a Chick-fil-A nearby. Noblesville police reported the cow escaped from a transport trailer. It took nearly an hour before the cow was finally captured and returned to its trailer. Huh. A cow going um, to Chick Fil A. That's not, not something a good, you see every day. Not I a good mean, choice either. They did either. get some free publicity though. <laughs> what do you think about it? Eat really, more chicken. I'm really not sure. I think I saw that on a couple other, yeah. you know, different state media's websites. Yeah, they got a lot of publicity for right. that. Right, but I'm just, I mean, I'm just confused. Like the cow thought that was the best place to go. It's not. Why did the chicken cross the road? Right. It's why, why did, did the cow, cow cross yeah. the road? Absolutely. Amazing. And the blind man made history in New York City. He completed a half marathon wow. led by guide dogs. Wow. Thomas Panek is the president and CEO of Guiding Eyes for the Blind. Hmm. This was his first race since losing his sight. The 5K race, which ran through Times Square, required Panek to have two transitions, but his guide dog helped him finish strong. Okay, so now I feel obligated to do a race because if someone can do it, you know, blind, blind like, I mean, I have no choice incredible. but to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I can barely uh, walk. <laughs> <laughs> and here he's doing a marathon with right. eye, seeing eye dogs. So yeah, that's amazing. That is absolutely incredible. That's great. I mean, so. yeah, it's really a story of perseverance when you look at it too. My mm -hmm. goodness. I mean, nothing's stopping him. So. Absolutely not. That is good. That's yeah. Good. Well, uh, Gabe, let's take one final look at weather. And uh, we've been talking all show yeah. about yeah. how uh, the sunshine is about to kick in. No rain, at least on a couple of days. Um, looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We had a, a good feeling story. And this forecast is also feels pretty good as well for the most part. As we see temperatures in the mid 40s for the most part, we do have to get through some rain Ugh. on Wednesday, unfortunately. It is the first day of spring, though, so you know what they say the spring showers, or not in mm. April yet, so we can't say April, bring May flowers. Yeah, so yeah. the good news is we see that sunshine come back out in the second half of the week into the 50s by Friday and Saturday. Friday looks to be beautiful if you're going to head out Friday and even into the 60s yes. by early next week. That's so what I'm looking yeah. overall, yeah. That's if you're missing the sunshine, about. it's a perfect week. But are the, is the sunshine here to stay, Gabe? Because, you know, we see this good weather, yeah, right? We, we and see then... Monday, but what's after Monday? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Monday, we've got the rain. We have to deal with the rain. But the good news is, from what I've been seeing, this upward temperature trend looks to be going for the long run. So well, that it looks like good. we're going to finally stabilize with those more moderate temperatures. And, you know, it's one of my favorite times of year because you come back and the spring happens and then you see them planting flowers right. around and campus it's like, and stuff like that. There is light at the end of the tunnel for sure. There's light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to weather. Yes. I mean, we see yeah. the sun and then the rain and then we come back to what we actually want to see. I don't always have good news for you, but today actually you do. You actually have, have just good remember news. This. It's finally the, the weather is not Gabe's we, fault. <laughs> you so. finally like the weather guy. <laughs> good stuff. Thanks, Gabe. I all like right. it. Thank you, Gabe. Well, that's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 9, streaming live on the Newslink Indiana Facebook page. And as always, don't forget to go ahead and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great night.